There's some small dispute. Michael Spinks, the man who edged Larry Holmes for the legitimate title, had never been conquered. 54-pound world championship fight. You see the seven-year age difference. Budwani won a silver medal in the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, South Korea, losing in the final to Robert Wangila of Nigeria. Height equal, reach, four-inch advantage to Budwani. They weighed in with Budwani weighing in a couple pounds under the limit. Each has gained 10 pounds since that time. Punch stat numbers, Larry. Well, we can see here that Reed is a but he will attack when the opportunity is there. Reed is more of the jab, uses the jab to set up everything else, especially that right hand. And rules with the fight judge and pharmacist, Harold Letterman. The Laurent Budwani David Reed fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions, which incidentally were agreed to right here in Atlantic City, thanks to commissioners Larry Hazard and Greg Serb. Budwani and Reed are both knockout punches, Jim. If a fighter gets knocked down, he has to take an eight count. That's a mandatory eight. He's got to take eight. If he gets up sooner, he still has to take eight. A lot of people mix it up with a standing eight. There is no standing eight count. Back to you, Jim. All right, Harold. And David Reed, as the challenger tonight, will be the first to enter the ring. Reed, of course, is from just up the road in Philadelphia, so this amounts to a home court for him. winning percentage and uh, as we suggested earlier maybe no Olympic prospect ever with the buildup that Reed enjoys has fought against a tougher selection of opponents in his first dozen fights and has been the case for him Al Mitchell who was one of his coaches on the 1996 Olympic team uh, has trained David Reed ever since he went into a gym in Philly at age 11 Here's a look at the champion from France. He is of Algerian heritage, grew up in the French Alps. And Algeria has provided a number of fighters for France, including Marcel Serdan, who I mentioned earlier. Posthumous tribute to Freddie Mercury. 38 wins, two losses, and a draw. 32 KOs. Four 0-1 in title fights. He has two wins over the fighter who last month seized a 154-pound title from American fighter Keith Mullings. And now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Valley's Park Place, Atlantic City, welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall, where tonight America presents, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Bears, Budweiser. This Bud's for you is proud to bring you, in association with AB Stars, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. 
sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz, Deputy Commissioner John Krico. Physicians at ringside are Dr. Dominic Coletta Jr., Dr. Richard Snepar, Dr. Louis Sabatini, and Dr. Jordan Garrison. Your timekeeper at the bell is Arthur Spell. World Boxing Association President, Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor at ringside, Carlos Chavez. The three judges in attendance scoring this bout on a 10-point must system tonight will be Alejandro Rochin de Mexico, John Stewart from the United States, and Fernando Viso from Venezuela. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Randy Newman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Bally's Park Place, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing black, trimmed with red and white, he weighs 154 pounds, and since capturing Olympic gold in 1996, he has a perfect professional record of 11 straight victories in as many bouts, including seven by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, the number eight ranked WBA junior middleweight in the world, the pride of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the American Across the ring, hiding out of the red corner, wearing white, blue, and red. He weighs 152 pounds and brings an outstanding professional record to this ring. 38 victories with 32 knockouts, only two losses and one draw. He has held the title since 1996 and tonight makes his fifth defense. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs from Salange, France, presenting the reigning and defending WBA Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Hey gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules that they've been gone over. I want you to remember two things. Obey my commands. And number one, defend yourselves at all times. Good luck. Shake hands and come out of the belt. All right. David Reed says that this will be like fighting for the gold medal again. And he fought for the gold medal. He was headed toward a decision loss in the third round against the veteran Alfredo Duvajal of Cuba. When he suddenly launched the right hurt round the world, a perfect right hand shot that dropped Duvajal into a stupor on the canvas it gave the USA its only gold medal of the 1996 games in boxing. Remember, there was only one gold medalist on the 1992 American Olympic boxing team as well. A fellow named De La Hoya. David Reed is a good, good boxer. He's more effective when he can make the guy come to him. So he's going to be trying to make the champion follow him a bit. He has power, but is not going forward. If David Reed doesn't set a fast pace, and he's often tactical rather than furious in the first couple of rounds, he sort of plays into Budwani's hands. Budwani is a 50-punch around guy who likes to get a look at his opponent, measure him, and try to set himself for power shots. Budwani has got to go out there and show this guy, look, I'm the champion. You're just not going to just walk over me. I've got something other than a reputation or uh, a title belt. I can fight. you got to establish that early with a young contender like this. Reed is very dynamic. He's always moving something. Feet, hips, stomach, or something. It's 
interesting how much Reed's left eye droops when you see it here in the ring because when you see it in daylight, it isn't drooping. According to his trainer, Al Mitchell, the light and the heat make, him, make his eyelid droop. Well, of course, the beginning of his professional career was delayed as he had surgery on that eyelid. But apparently no surgery will completely limit the effect of the drooping syndrome. Budawani was able to land the first good right hand. That established, hey, I can punch. And one of the things that Al Mitchell, Reed's trainer, said admiringly about Budawani is, he's a good counter puncher. He will counter David's good shots. David Reed does not allow you to set up, think about what you're gonna do. When you think about one thing, he moves in another direction and makes you have to think of another thing. Good left hook by Reed. Difference in hand speed, obvious early, as Buduani gets off one punch at a time, and Reed is able to fire combinations. Buduani seems to be thinking as a puncher, waiting on one shot, and he did it. Good right hand, that hurt. Excellent right hand shot by Buduani, and you saw Reed smiling. That hurt. Sure indicated. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't laughing. He, he was smiling that I got that one. I caught that one. Detected David Reed to be the busier of the two fighters in round one by CompuBox numbers. He threw 58 punches. Buduani only threw 30. But Buduani landed just as many and landed the harder shots. Eight of 12 power shots. Buduani is smart. He goes out there and attack three shots and then step back. So come and get me, youngster. He likes to attack you and then take a walk, which is what you want. David Reed is like a sniper, like a snake. He sn sticks a left jab in and gets right out of the way. We want to seem to be interested in a right hand. I'm going to catch him. He's definitely looking for Reed to do all the leading. You want to be champion? You're going to have to leave. Can't sit back and say I'm going to take a man's champion, championship, and counter punch out. Man. And remember, despite all the hoopla surrounding Reed, it is Budwani in the white trunks who holds a world title coming into this fight. Whacking him twice with the right hand. Reed drops his hands as if to say, you ain't got nothing. Well, let me tell you, he did have something. Those punches hurt. Reed working the right hand to the body. Very smart about getting in those body shots early on in the fight. Very apparent that Bidwani does not want to get hit by the right hand. He's really trying to neutralize Reed's right hand and making him beat him some, some other way. Oh, another overhand right by Bidwani. That one came from an unusual angle and Reed didn't respond well to it. It landed flush on the jaw. Well, as soon as Reed stops moving just a little bit, the champion takes off on him. He can't be still. Reed, Budwani landing with the right upstairs as well. Still the challenger is trying to pick the fight. Minded. Throws a right hand occasionally just to make the youngster think about it. I have a right hand too. Well, he's got a style that just sort of naturally slows the pace of the fight. He's going to make you fight at his work rate. There's a good straight left hand by David Reed. Stopped Buduani as Buduani was trying to come in and attack. Looking for the one big punch, just fight him, build up a lead, and then he'll have to come to you, and then you can you can try to get, nail him. 
So far in the first two rounds, CompuBox punch trackers have Buduani landing at the much higher rate. Reed had trouble finding Buduani in the second round. Now David steps forward behind the jab and doubles it up. Now, his corner told him, right, build up a big lead and then go after the bigger shots. I like that. It's seldom you hear a corner tell a guy, build up your lead. And that's what Reed corner told him. Go build up your lead. Step back, step back. Now Reed seems to be beginning to solve the Buduani puzzle just a little bit as he starts to fire and land the jab with much greater frequency than at any time in the first two rounds. The champion Buduani is a very solid fighter. Keeps his defense no matter what you do to him. Keeps his hands in position. Reed is measuring a jab. Very good jab. Much more effective in this round as he throws his jab with greater frequency. Missed with the right hand, kind of chuckled about it. Buduani's got the look of a guy who would be a body puncher, but he doesn't fire to the body all that often. Yeah, he likes to do everything around the shoulder length. Nice shoulder. Everything is going to come from that shoulder. And you saw the counter left hand that landed and sort of snapped Reed's head back a little bit. Reed has been consistent with these right hands to the body. A lead and follow kind of fight. David Reed trying to step forward and take the lead. Buduani working off of what Reed does and effectively so, so far. Whenever Buduani leads with the right hand, he does well. Reed just missing with the right hand over the top of Buduani's head. God drops his hand. That means you should go get him. Buduani pounding away with those right-hand leads, as George told you. He's been able to land over the top of Reed's left. He never seems to miss when he does it. Ooh, good right-hand by Reed. Outstanding. So Buduani tastes the power in the Reed right cross for the first time. Buduani landing a left as Reed steps in. Oh, he's got the right hand over Boot one again. And Reed going back to the body with the right as he's done so frequently early on. That's what you want to what you want to do is land those right hands to the body and make this fella drop his left hand a little bit. You change your well every five thousand. The heavyweight fight. This one seems a little oh, timid and tactical so far. The heavyweight battle, if you missed it, was all-out warfare between Lou Savarese and Lance Mount Whitaker, culminating in a split decision for Savarese. David Reed decides to double jab. He never loses his balance. Steps and slides. Budwani shows enough respect in the early going for Reed's speed and punching power that by CompuBox numbers, he's been throwing only 27 punches around, landing at a higher rate than Reed, but you wonder how many rounds he can win on the scorecards when Reed throws so many more punches. Now he's got him moving. you got to keep him moving. Reed has got him off balance, trying to find his footwork, going to the body. That's what you want to do. Keep it going like that all night. Making your opponent try to set up and restart things. And Reed keeps going to the body with the right hand, trying to bring Buduani's left down. That's what he's done. He's thrown the right hand to the body over and over. Sooner or later, it starts to hurt, and Buduani starts dropping his hand more to protect his side. But that was make the opening for Reed's right cross, which is his thunder punch. And that's what he's trying to do, and it's hard to see a guy with so few fights think like that. Lord Patterson could think like that. Also an Olympian. I was trying to say, another Olympic gold medalist. Good left hook by Reed. I think it's still a little early for Reed to try to power stuff right now. Now he's staying in the pocket, Reed deal. So every time this, his opponent throws a fight, a punch, he stays right there with his hands in position. And Reed snapped Buduani with an uppercut. The Frenchman 
in this round has been limited to throwing one punch at a time, as he seems to exhibit greater and greater respect for David Reed's punching power. You watch Reed, whenever there are some punches thrown, his hands are covered up, covered him up very good. He doesn't jump out of the way. Reed, on the attack. And Dudawani retaliating, but with one punch at a time. Now there's some good combinations about the yep. one. Now he goes back to combination punching, the left of the body, the right upstairs. say to Reed, you work to the body and fire the jab, quit looking for anything else. That's right, because you get a little careless thinking, hey, I got him. This guy's KG, he's accustomed to adversity. He's not going to fold. Harold, how do you have it through four? Jim, three rounds to one, 39, 37, David Reed. Jim, that doesn't, the unusual thing about this fight to me is, I never saw a right-handed fighter throw so many right-hand leads in my entire life. The rock would want he doesn't snap a left jab. I mean, it's virtually all right-hand leads. He landed him real good in the first round. That's the round they gave him. But from then on in, David Reed's slowly coming. He's been blocking him and doing a nice job coming forward, carrying the pace of his fight. So I think Reed's out there today. And Reed, obviously listening well to Mitchell, has followed the plan in this round, working the jab and going to the body. Whenever Reed decides to be a little subtle, he'd want to attack with this quick lead right hand. Reed still is not taking the advice of his corner. Stop looking for the big shots. Just do something. Good left jab now. That left jab can carry David Reed to a title if he just trusts in it. If he has faith in his dominance via the jab and sticks with it all night long, he's going to walk out of here with a title belt. And Reed has got excellent vision. No punches are thrown here. Get right in there and look at what he's doing in close shots. McGuire is showing that he feels he has to engage Reed more. You suspect that Budwani, who's always been partial to the right-hand lead, is more so tonight looking at Reed's droopy left eyelid in front of him. And in fact, there's a welt, a lump that's grown under the left eye of Reed. Sure is. And that welt is getting much bigger in this round as Budwani has landed a couple of those right-hand leads again. Which makes you wonder just how clearly Reed is seeing that punch. Reader's got excellent vision. I can tell you that the way he sits in the pocket whenever Boot want to throw in combinations. You can only do that with sight. Yeah, Reed yeah. is landing his jab at a higher and higher rate of accuracy as the fight goes on. And that's what the champion should not allow him to do. Don't let him get confident with his left jab. You can just almost see Budwani's mind working, saying, I can close that left eye. I'm not that far away from closing it right now. It doesn't carry much power. It's the power of a, a good hard jab, but it is effective. That man Fred Jenkins able to bring some of the swelling down on David Reed's left eye between rounds, but you wonder how well Reed sees the right hand leads coming as Budwani goes back to work with his bread and butter punch. Reed's corner told him to move over and away from that right hand. Stay on the left side a little bit. Use his own right hand. Let's see if he follows that direction, those directions. So far, he did. Whatever you want to do, you hit him with your left and then move to your right. 
little Giuliani will have to travel a longer distance to throw that right hand lead. Yeah, you want to just stay on the outside, then you can do it all night if you're quick enough. Reed threw 55 jabs in the last round as Al Mitchell con continues to demand that he step up the jab output. Then he says, under and over with the right hand. Reed's still trying to force the issue with the right hand. Needs to go back to the body. And he did, and that was a good body punch. See, Boot wanted waving his left hand left is because that body shot hurt. I made him pay some attention. Reed is not following the direction. The stay over on the left, over the right side. Boot one is left side. Stay over there. Boot one, whenever he's moving, he's thinking about doing something. against Gennaro Hernandez or Fernando Vargas against Yori Boy Campus and both of those look like formidable opponents coming in. Luke one is thinking system. He's thinking. He moves out of the way a little bit. He has a plan. There you go. Solid right hand lead by Luke one and another one. And the Frenchman suddenly goes to work with the left hand. And again lands the right hand lead and again you gotta wonder if Reed sees it coming. Boudouard's smart. Boudouard is smart. Moves, makes you think, I'm afraid. I'm hurt. Then he comes back and hurt you. Call a clever boxer. Good right hand to the body by Reed. Reed is standing still again. His corner told him to move to the left of the champion. Boudouard is like a right hand pitcher who delivers from different angles. He's got a little of the, the Kevin Brown and the David Cohen in him in that he'll throw that right hand lead over the top, he'll throw it from a three-quarter angle, or he'll throw it from the side. Fascinating fight to score as we go into the seventh. Reed landing more punches. Udwani very sparing in his punch output, but landing hard when he lands. That good one is very smart. He took charge in the beginning of the round. Make this youngster think, hey, I'm coming after you. Then he settles back into his counter-punching position. Udwani not throwing punches to begin the seventh, and David Reed landing a couple of combinations to seize the initiative in the round. One is clever, moves left, he moves right, drops his hand, and then looks at something and think about what he's going to do. You want to start thinking about winning this fight soon, George, because uh, he, he's not doing much, landing enough punches, he has a flurry or two going around, it doesn't do... And now we have some left hooks to the body by uh, David Reed. You're right. You're right. Other Reed's way. been landing the right hand of the body all night. Now he's starting to land the left as well. Larry? Uh, you wonder why does a champion come to the other guy's home territory to fight him? Uh, the reason is is that Bidwani's gotten by far the biggest purse of his life, a million dollar purse. And if he loses a close decision here, he took a million dollars for his title. And he can always claim, he can go back to Europe and claim that he didn't have a chance to win on Reed's home court anyway. Left hook lands for Reed. Good one has got a lot of pride, guys. He's going to try to do everything he can to win this fight. You see him trying to get position to get this guy back? When you get in that ring, the last thing on your mind is your money. Judges have been brought in by the governing body. They are from Tijuana, Valencia, Venezuela, and one from New Jersey. So it's an international group. Reed missing over the top with the right hand and shaking his head as if to say, I almost had you. Duani lands his right hand lead again, but not as much mustard on it as was the case earlier in the fight. The second one was a little better. Now boot one has got David Reed trying to set up, moving in and out of position. To give him some of his own medicine. Good combination by Reed.
Rocky Box numbers gave Reed an edge in power punches landed in the round. You can see Reed, how Letterman scored it for the Frenchman, yes? Early on, Reed would stay in the pocket whenever this guy would attack him. Now he's starting to back up. Now you can get caught. You want to stay close and cover up, use your defense. And that's why he was able to get caught with three or four right hands, backing up. Now he's scheduled for 12 rounds. Laurent Uduani's world championship at 154 pounds on the table for the winner here. The champion is in, in the kind of territory he wants to be in. 12 rounds. Oh, good right hand by David Reed. Reed's biggest right cross of the fight lands flush on the cheek of Budwani. And we learn one more thing about the Frenchman, which is that he brought a beard with him. <laughs> he can take a shot. No question he can take a shot. There are a lot of 154-pound fighters who are getting up off the canvas now. And Reed lands that right hand. is thinking at this point. David Reed is sitting there trying to be a comic puncher. You can't do that with this guy. Reed seemingly a little more tentative here in round eight. Perhaps the result of the Budawani rally that ended round seven. the biggest punch of the round, which is that clean right cross. Luke Warney moves to Reed's left side. He seemed to think there's problems over there, and he stays consistently over there. And Reed backs him up with a double jab and a right hand. Now Reed is staying in the pocket. He's not backing away, you see. Stay away from home. Reed dropped his left hand inside and gave Luke a shot with the right. David's hand speed apparent in exchanges like that. You gotta stand right there, use your pivot, and get closer. Right back away. Come on, step back. Good power in the right hand by the champion. Reed puts his left glove up by the side of his head to try to continue to protect against Haran Budawani's chopping right hand shots. Oh, great work with the left hand by Reed there. To the body, to the head. It's Budawani's brother, and he was the one who was selling him. Reed is busier than you are. You're going to have to step it up. Harold, how do you have it? 78, 74, six rounds to two, David Reed. He's out boxing him, out working him, there's no question. He's winning a clean punching, out effective aggressive, there's certainly a good defense. See that? He blocks those shots, he gets his hands up high, he elbows in tight, good defense by David Reed. He got nailed in the seventh by dropping his hands. But I gotta point out one thing, look at Judge Fernando Viso on our right side, Jim. Michelle carries through Wally's promoter, keeps looking over his shoulder. He did that to me in Paris in a tire fight. I don't think that's fair. We ought to get our carries out of there. He has no right to look at the judge or look at its scores. You're saying how that the carries is doing what? Look, he's looking over the shoulder of Judge Fernando Viso to see how he's scoring the fight. Watch. The good thing about David Reed, he's been in Philadelphia, so he's accustomed to trading shots. You don't want to get him to doing that. You want to hit him and get out of the way. Reed has taken the training in Denver before his fights. He trained in Denver before this one, and one reason is that there are gym wars in Philadelphia. There are so many good sparring partners there who want to make a name for themselves against big-name fighters, and he doesn't want the wear and tear, which he thinks has limited the star potential of some Philly fighters in the past. Reed trying to go to the body with the right hand, a little bit low. He pounded Budwani on the upper hip. Now he gets in a right hand body shot. Some of them are low though. Yeah, the referee should step in and talk about that. And Randy Newman does. Newman, a former fighter himself. 
a good heavyweight. It looks to me as though Boudouani has an abrasion or some kind of a cut near his left eye. Boy, David Reed is dropping his left hand as though he's inviting that right hand by Boudouani. Boudouani throwing the right hand lead, but not with as much Christmas on it as was the case before. Ooh. Oh, good left hook by Reed. He set it up with the two body shots. Boudouani rivals. Reed goes to work. And you can bet the champion will be holding here. He's brave, that champion, as he has a lot of courage. Right hand shot lands for Reed. Boudouani in serious trouble. Landed another right to the temple. Now Reed is going to concentrate and be able to calculate what he's doing. This part, you can throw a lot of power away. Put the punches together and let the power develop it out by itself. Closing seconds of the round. Bell will save Boudouani from further harm. Readers better be careful. Take your time. Get back behind your left jab because Boudouani, it's, he's not a coward and he can punch. And I can feel you smiling, George, when Al Mitchell said to Reed, the only thing I don't like is you dropping your hands. Yep. This champion, Boudouani, is very smart. And he's been in this kind of position before. And a lot of fighters who are at their most dangerous when they seem to be in trouble. Boudouani not throwing much to begin round 10, but Reed offering respect and a little caution as he looks to get started again. He was smart enough to go to the body. Boudouani. Now he's, he's got things back under control. Reminds me of a fighter, Heinz Metzen. That's a lot to go to the body. Heinz Metzen? Yeah, he always try to go to the body from Germany. Meanwhile, Boudouani, who seldom throws a jab, throws three or four. Oh, left hook by Reed. More body shots from Reed. That's what set up the great left hook in the last round. Randy Newman telling Reed that another low blow will bring a one-point penalty. David Reed has got to be smart. Go to the left jab. Do everything down your jab. Fake, fake. Use a little footwork. Look at how well conditioned the young fighter is, George. I'm surprised. 11 fights. Guy, he has that much condition. I'm He's sure. Still moving his head. Still moving his feet in the right directions. He better because that boot one is. He won to get him. position before and he knows how to fight in adversity. David Reed has turned into the old quality puncher now and gotten away from all of his skill and speed. Up. Jabs and body punches got Reed into that position of dominance. You should go back to jabs and body punches now. As his trainer Al Mitchell said, it's there all night. And he's dropping his hand and his trainer told him, do not do that. Boudouani's looking to get off another right-hand lead. And he keeps moving his waist. Left, right, left, right, measuring for a right hand. Hey, how you doing? You doing Ten. If they take away your best weapon, which is his right, you have to find a way to beat the opponent without it. But there you saw Boudouani, who was showing, him to showing himself to be a real price fighter. One of the better European price fighters we have seen in recent years. Told you, it's about money. Round 11. And there's the Letterman card. He gave Boudouani the last round. Boudouani is smelling knockout. He smells it, and he's going to try to get it. And you heard Luis Acarius in his corner saying, you've got to finish him, go get him, you can do it. The 
You don't want to follow him around if you're David Reed. You want to keep your jab following him around. He waits until you stop jabbing, then he come and get you. Uduati throwing Carson to the wings as he tries to reel in David Reed with power shots. At no point has Al Mitchell told his fighter to go out and finish Budwani. You get the impression that Al would be pleased as punch if his man were coached to a decision victory. But it's not going to be easy. Budwani makes the challenger follow him around, follow him around. Then when he stops, he attacks. his jab and keeps up the tempo, Udawani's more or less helpless against him. But when Reed stops, Udawani attacks with the right hand. Udawani suddenly turning southpaw. Steps into a southpaw stance. He, David Reed, he has a lot of experience, international experience, so the southpaw stuff is not going to bother him. And Udawani seemingly recognizes that as he steps back into his conventional stance. Now Reed is starting to reach, step out, and he's playing into the champions. Budawani landing another right, and Reed stops punching as Budawani fires. Budawani is trying to play catch up, and he's playing it very well here. Question of whether he has the power to do something dramatic. Hard yeah, right uppercut in there by Reed. And Reed is, like I said earlier, he's been in Philadelphia, so he's not, he's not ashamed to fight. But he's got an instinct to trade with Budwani, and I have a feeling that Mitchell might be happier if he would box it. But now you can throw that away now. He's not going to box. This guy's not going to allow him to box. You have to stand there and fight. Good left hook by Reed. Budwani's still attacking with the right. He's going to have to get in there and wade in and do the Philadelphia. Harold, how do you have it going to the final stand? Jim, 106, 102, seven rounds to four, David Green. I'm just thinking out what the busier guy, better boxer. Said there how to give Big Ronnie rounds 10 and 11. He came on strong, there's no question. He's trying to pull this fight out, but I think he needs to knock out to win it, Jim. I think David Green's controlling this boxing. And a moment ago, you saw a brilliant Reed combination as he tries to produce an Oscar De La Hoya style 12th round rally to satisfy his man, Al Mitchell's demand. And you're right, George. It's a fight, and Reed is ready for the fight. Brilliant hand speed for Reed as he fires his combinations and makes his statement. Trying to take the title belt in a real test against a top champion. You gotta ask Reed, what are you saving it for? This is it. Don't hold back. Right hand landed in close for Reed. Budawani has not been able to land one of his big right hand leads so far in the round. Reed much busier. Without throwing punches. Reed cannot walk in without throwing punches. Why, why would Budwani turn into a South Korea at this stage of the game? He, he's trying to hold himself from being knocked out, and that's smart. Anything it takes, go for it. Oh, another brilliant left hook by Reed. This is championship stuff that David Reed has produced in this round. On demand, combinations, high energy, the kind of rally necessary to leave no doubt. Trying to become the third member of his Olympic class to win a world championship. Looking down the road toward potentially huge fights against Fernando Vargas, against Oscar De La Hoya or Felix Trinidad or Mike Quarte or some combination of the three. A left hand by Budwani. Snaps Reed's head back. That hurt, and it gets all into the bottom of your knees. You got to fight out of it. David goes.
goes down to one knee. Randy Newman calls it a slip. A fight to the finish. They forgot to even say 10 seconds. Boy. I had Reed winning the fight. I, it's hard to take a champion's title when he fights like that for the last two rounds. But I think Reed won the 12th round big because he dominated the first two minutes of the round before Buduani finally rallied at the end. Box numbers in the final round. David Reed threw 70 punches. His most active round in the second half of the fight. Landed 34 and had a 30 to 16 edge in power shots. It was the kind of rally that champions produce when they absolutely have to have it. You've got to be a champ all the way from the first to the, especially the final three minutes. <laughs> How'd you have the fight? <laughs> 116, 111, eight rounds to four, David Reed. I, I also gave him the 12 right chin. There's no question. He carried it for two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes before Buwani came on. I mean, absolutely, David won that 12 round. But you gotta give David a 10-8 round in round nine. I mean, that, that was the really big defining round in the entire fight. He staggered him. He certainly deserves an extra point in the ninth round. So David Reed by five points. There's no question he won a fight. An interesting battle that was a tactical fight through the first six or seven rounds. Then, as Laurent Boudouani sensed the desperation of his situation and stepped up the attack, it became, as George Foreman called it, an all-out Philadelphia fight in the last five rounds. Here's some action from the closing stanzas, starting in round number nine, when David Reed was able to hurt Boudouani with that staggering left hook there. And then in round 10, as Reed was trying to follow up the assault, and again landed the left in close, Boudouani came back with his right hand shots and momentarily staggered Reed. Then in the last round, when Al Mitchell told his fighter to go out to win the round, David Reed left no doubt with combination punching like that in the first two minutes of the round. But as had been his habit throughout the fight, Budwani rallied in the last 30 seconds, landing that one big left hand before the bell sounded to end the 12 rounds. Budwani just didn't want to do anything but a hard right hand here and there. A good left hook behind it could have changed everything. Reed, the more well-rounded fighter, showing a greater variety of skills throughout the bout. Budwani has a game plan all his own, and you can certainly see how it's been effective throughout his career. Did you win the fight or did you beat the champion? That's what the judges are asking themselves right now. Well, here's the answer as we go to Michael Buffer in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Valley's Park Place, Atlantic City, New Jersey, we go to the Budweiser scorecards. Fernando Viso scores the bout 118 to 112. Alejandro Rochin scores at 117 to 112. John Stewart scores at 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision and new... And you can see the margin by which Reed outlanded Boudouani, markedly more active, throwing 335 more punches than the Frenchman did. Frenchman landing at a very high rate of accuracy as his right-hand lead constantly targeted David Reed's drooping left eyelid.
Jabs in the bout. Budwani scarcely throws jabs. Only an average of about 10 per round. Reed throwing a lot of them, not landing at a particularly high rate, but the activity level was important in setting up his power punches, which he landed at an astonishing rate of accuracy. Look at that. 145 out of 254 crosses, hooks, and uppercuts. That ultimately gave Reed the margin of victory in a unanimous decision that was slightly more one-sided than you might have expected it to be. And Boxing After Dark returns later this month. Ike Bayabuchi, best known for his thrilling decision over David Tua, takes on another good one in Chris Bird. Also, Canadian Kirk Johnson and Al Cole fight a rematch of their Rock'em Sock'em majority draw from December. And in April, the King of Swing, Prince Nassim Ahmed returns. will be cheered on by 15,000 English faithful in Manchester as he takes on European and Commonwealth champion Paul Engel. Tonight in Atlantic City, 22 rounds of fighting here on HBO. Lou Savarese and Lance Mount Whitaker fought a big man's war. Both fighters over 240 pounds, both landing thunderous blows throughout 10 rounds. Savarese getting the decision on greater craftsmanship. You might have seen it that way going in. And then David Reed became the third member of the 1996 Olympic team to win a world championship, joining Fernando Vargas and Floyd Mayweather Jr. with a stirring 12-round decision over tough French champion Laurent Boudouani. Congratulations, the American dream, David Reed. Now for the entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's edition of World Championship Boxing was produced by Dave Harmon and directed by Mark Payton. Associate producers Brian McDonald and Thomas Odelfeld. Assistant to the producer Matt Bolin. Production manager John McCalley. Technical supervisor John Tomlin Tomlinson. And the technical director was Doug Getz. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.